Bye, boys. Welcome, welcome. With the Suicide Squad coming out soon, I figured let's check out the first adaptation. Suicide Squad is a 2016 American superhero film based on the DC Comics villain team of the same name. This is the third installment in the DC Extended Universe, and it's not an attempt to copy the Guardians of the Galaxy. It was written and directed by David Ayer and stars in an ensemble cast. However, the film was played with reshoots and a troubled post-production. For example, the film was edited by the same company who made the trailer, you know, the good one, to make it less dark and more fun like Marvel. So did it pay off? <laughs> So let's check out this shit show. The film begins at a prison where we are introduced to two of our protagonists, like Deadshot, played by Will Smith, and Harley Quinn, played by Margot Robbie, as they are mistreated by the warden and guards. Spring break. Well, this doesn't violate any human rights laws. Anyways, we are then introduced to intelligence officer Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis, who convinces two US government officials, one of whom is played by David Harbour, to Greenlight Task Force X, a response team of criminals and supervillains as an answer after the aftermath of Superman's death. We got lucky with Superman, he shared our values. The next Superman might not. Wait. Why didn't she just call Batman a Wonder Woman? They proved they can hold their own against a superpowered threat. Anyways, the roster consists of the previously mentioned Deadshot, who just wants to reunite with his daughter Zoe after he was arrested by Batman. It's over, Deadshot. Daddy, please. Zoe, move! Please, Daddy, don't move. Seriously, you can't just move her or aim higher? Harley Quinn, a former psychiatrist turned girlfriend of Gotham crime lord Joker, played by Jared Leto, who looks like a cross between an e-boy and a SoundCloud rapper. And she also gets caught by Batman. Next we have Australian thief Captain Boomerang, played by Jai Courtney, who, you guessed it, uses boomerangs, and he was caught by the Flash. No honor among thieves, eh? Next we have pyrokinetic ex-gangster Diablo, played by Jay Hernandez, and mutant cannibal killer Croc, and Dr. June Moon, played by Cara Delevingne, an American archaeologist who becomes possessed by a demonic witch, the Enchantress. Waller can control the Enchantress by seizing her magical heart. Waller subordinate Colonel Rick Flagg, played by Joel Kinnaman, is in love with Moon and is the leader of Task Force X. Flag and Waller later go to the prison to see their new subordinates. Y'all gonna pay for my daughter's whole education. Ivy League, yeah, one of them big joints. And uh, if she can't cut it and her grades start slipping, I mean, you white people that thing. Mm -hmm. You know how y'all do. Oh, yeah. You all right? Damn, they even predicted the college admission scandal. And the warden gets a visit of his own from the Joker. I can tell you meant that. Yeah. You're gonna be my friend. I can't tell if he's trying to threaten him or fuck him. Moving on, the Enchantress betrays Waller, conquering Midway City, transforming humans into monsters, and summoning her brother Incubus to destroy humanity. Task Force X is formed to stop Enchantress, and we get an additional member, Slipknot, played by Adam Beach. Hmm, I wonder why he didn't have an intro like the others. Anyways, Rick Flag shows up and tells the team their situation and to suit up. What? Uh, they're just picturing you in your Wolf of Wall Street scene. 
and they are later joined by Flag's associate Katana, played by Karen Fukuhara, who's a Japanese swordswoman. And well, Flag will say the rest. I would advise not getting killed by her. Her sword traps the souls of its victims. God damn, they're not even trying to hide what they're ripping off. Upon arrival in Midway City, the team's helicopter is shot down, forcing them to travel on foot. Boomerang convinces them not to take off, believing the bombs are a ruse. But... <laughs> so that's why he didn't get his own intro. After several firefights and scaling a skyscraper, the team discover Wallace is their mark, trying to cover up her involvement in Enchantress Revolt. As Waller and the squad await their helicopter extraction, the Joker intervenes, disables Harley's bomb, and helps her escape. Waller shoots down the Joker's helicopter, though Harley survives and rejoins the squad, believing her Puddin is dead. Enchantress and kidnaps Waller to gain her heart. Deadshot finds Waller's confidential files, discovering Flag's relationship with Moon. The team abandon Flag and wait, why is Katana going with them? Then they share drinks at an abandoned bar where Diablo reveals his powers and criminal lifestyle, which led to the deaths of his family. Flag later joins the squad. You get to the part in that binder saying I was sleeping with her. Yeah, I've never been with a witch before. What's that like? Hey, you're lucky Waller didn't have your sex tape. Flag relieves them of their mission. Your daughter writes you every day. Wait, why do you have his letters? Was it just to motivate him? Now with them realizing they have the opportunity to prove themselves, the group set out to save the city. Again, for what reason? The squad locate Enchantress in a flooded subway station. She then invites the squad to join her, and she will make their wishes come true. Apparently, Deadshot's dream is to kill Batman and not to reunite with his daughter. Harley's dream is to marry Joker and start a family. And am I the only one weirded out by seeing Jared Leto being normal? Also, both Diablo and Flag seem to be immune to her persuasion, and they start fighting. While Killer Croc and Flag's platoon of Navy SEALs plant the bomb underneath the subway, Diablo embraces the demonic nature of his pyrokinesis. What? What the fuck? Diablo is sacrificing himself to allow the bomb to destroy Incubus. Everybody down! Get the team guys, stay away. What the fuck? Enchantress again invites the squad to join her, and Harley appears tempt, but uses it as a ruse to cut out the Enchantress heart. Her heart's out! We can end this! She is defeated, and Flag crushes her heart, killing her and releasing Moon from her control. Waller appears, removing 10 years off each squad member's sentence, and rewarding them with requests, except for Boomerang. Anyways, the Joker, who appears to be alive, what a shocker, breaks into the prison and rescues Harley. In the mid credit scene, Waller meets with Bruce Wayne, who agrees to aid her reputation in exchange for government files on the growing metahuman community in order to build his own superhero team. She advises him to stop working late nights, and he tells her to shut down Task Force X. And that was Suicide Squad. The film was a box office hit, but it received negative reviews from critics, like criticizing its plot, direction, and characters, and yet praised by some fans claiming it's the best of the DCEU. Boy, did that age like milk. The film was even nominated for an Oscar and won for Best Makeup and Hairstyling at the 89th Academy Awards. What? What the fuck? Making it the first film in DCEU to win an Academy Award. Furthermore, fans have asked David Ayer why wasn't the Joker involved more, 
He said he couldn't find a way to do it. And to add insult to injury, a fan pointed out that Batman Assault on Arkham was basically an animated Suicide Squad film that did it better. Ooh, that hurt. In my opinion, yeah, this film is pretty shit. Yeah, it's basically trying to rip off everything from the Marvel films, especially Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's one gigantic mess. Like, it's plot and editing is one gigantic mess. And also, the characters' motivations don't make a whole lot of sense. At one point, they want to escape the Suicide Squad. On the next, they stay to save the world. And also, the characters in this film are bland as hell. Will Smith is just being Will Smith. Margot Robbie's Harley doesn't have the same charm as the Harley in the animated series. Also, Diablo's motivation doesn't make any sense whatsoever. He claims that he doesn't want to lose another family during his sacrifice, even though we are shown very little of it on screen. Also, the film tries way too hard to make us care about these characters for no reason whatsoever. Also, its use of music is just horrible. The first half seems like a music video until the mid-city scene. So yeah, I would avoid this film at all costs. It makes the Justice League look better by comparison. And that's not saying a lot. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me.